So John, Christians affirm the doctrine of the Trinity. And one of the reasons that some theologians and thinkers in the past wanted to deny the Trinity, and frankly probably uh, one of the reasons that people today might want to deny the Trinity is because they doubt that Jesus Christ could actually be a divine person. And yet Christianity has affirmed this. Mm -hmm. So help us think through and understand why exactly the church has affirmed that Jesus Christ was God. Yeah. Yeah, this is, like you said, this is a, a dividing line between Christians and some pseudo-Christian groups. Mm -hmm. And so we are from the full deity of Christ, that he was in fact God incarnate, things like that. About three or four reasons why we do that. One is, is Scripture says so. Mm -hmm. From John 1, 1, which says the word was God, to uh, John 20, where, where Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Mm -hmm. uh, there's half a dozen or so verses where he's just point blank is called God. But I think even more important than me, than, than those point blank verses, are, are the types of things that Jesus did. Accepting worship. Mm. Uh, he would allow people to fall on his knees and worship him. Uh, you know, elsewhere, angels say, don't do that to me. Uh, yeah. I'm not that, you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. So he accepted, he, uh, he forgave sins. Mm. Knowing that people said they're going to question, only God can forgive sins. Okay, so therefore now draw the conclusion. <laughs> right. I'm forgiving sins, things like that. Uh, things like the, even being able to save us. Well, salvation is God's sized work. And so uh, Athanasius, one of the great church fathers, said uh, that we, we must have a divine Savior if salvation is to be real because hmm. he's going to save us. And, and that, that's God's sized work. And so those types of things. And then the titles that were used for Jesus, Son of God and unique, one and only Son of God, uh, Lord, using the same word for Jesus used for Yahweh in the Old Testament, hmm. and things like that. Uh, a son of man, even a, a, a very high exalted title from Daniel 7, things like that. So uh, the, the t verses, the acts that he did, the titles that were used for him, uh, those types of things point out the inescapable deity of Christ. Okay, so Christianity has its reasons for thinking that Christ is divine. Yeah. But interestingly, Christianity also says that Jesus Christ had real and full humanity yeah. as well. Why, do, why does Christianity say this type of thing? Well, again, this is an important thing because I, I think that some Christians think that Jesus wasn't really like us because he was <laughs> divine. There's some type of, of uh, cast there, but no. Uh, this is the way that, that the, the first Christian encountered Jesus. Mm -hmm. Born as a baby, like every other baby was born, uh, as far as we know. Uh, cried and needed his bottle and things like that. And uh, it talks about him being hungry and thirsty and uh, answering questions. And it's important because he was supposed to be one of us, mm -hmm. uh, God with us. And uh, as we see later on in his life, taking our place on the cross and things like that. So he had to be sheer flesh and blood, sheer nature with us to take our place to be our substitute. Uh, as Paul says, the second Adam. Mm -hmm. uh, where the first Adam fell, the second Adam stands. And so he, he has to have solidarity with us, one with us. And so, yes, they affirm because they saw him this way, he lived this way. Uh, and so they, they said, yes, he's both God and man. Okay, both God, both man. He's both of these at the same time. But how does that work? Because it would look like if you're God, then you wouldn't have certain kinds of limitations right, yeah. that he seemed to have while he was on earth. So how does that work out and how does the church thought about that? Well, there's a, there's a very important passage in Philippians 2 uh, where Paul describes the incarnation as Christ emptying himself. Mm -hmm. One of the great discussions is, uh, is of what did Christ empty himself? He couldn't cease to be God because one of the properties of God, mm -hmm. he can't die. That's right. Uh, so God can't cease to be God, but I think Jesus could choose not to call upon his omnipotence or his omniscience. Uh, he said, I, I make a choice. In order to, to fully experience what it's like to be a human, I will choose not to use. It's like I'm going to live with one hand tied behind my back. Yeah? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to live and I'm going to never call upon my omniscience. So when I ask questions, they're real questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, I won't use my omnipotence so that if there's something uh, uh, that I can't do in my physical strength, I, I won't, I'll, I'll be weak. I won't be able to do that, those types mm -hmm. of things. He, so he chose. I think this is the most amazing thing to me. He chose to so identify with us uh, that he says, I don't know the hour of my return. Hmm. Well, it's God. He knows everything. Right. Well, he chose not to know that because we don't know everything. And one of the things that's frustrating for us is not knowing everything. <laughs> so Jesus says, in order to experience what you experience, which you used not to know. So it says in Luke 2, he grew in wisdom, stature, favor with God. He grew. Yeah. He had to learn how to speak. Yeah. Uh, the one who made our tongue had to learn how to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, so this is an amazing thing to me that, that he chose to identify with us so much so that one day he could even take our sins upon himself. He's that close to identification with us.